um, specifically to make recommendation? To support that the child continue to stay at your facility. Um, so it's a complicated question. Um, well, actually, I just want to clarify. It's not too complicated because you did say in your deputation that there was, um, you had support from Haldeman Norfolk Reach. So I just want to clarify, do you actually have some kind of other than just verbal, like an actual written something saying that this is what they recommend? Um, so um, the social worker had given me um, verbal um, and made and made an application to, to for funding. So made that application um, when I asked her to give me a written document. Um, the answer was that because Reach receives its funding also from um, Norfolk County, that they um, were feeling nervous to be to, to do so. Um, um, unfortunately, there there may be some other issues um, involved. Um, that would have precluded the sudden disruption of services. I'm just sticking with, um, I do have a letter from, um, um, I have coordinated with um, the, the Norfolk Social Services and the um, and supervisors, and I'm just going with their answer, which is that this is that, that, that um, funding is limited to age. Um, the, the problem with that is that the child was set up when he when he was five okay. and not so the um, the funding then this wouldn't necessarily this funding formula wouldn't necessarily apply to just your facility this would be across the board it would be. okay all right thank you okay mm -hmm. council ran past yes thank you mr. chairman um, to the deputation and you were doing an excellent job trying to fit a whole lot of information in a very short amount of time but what I missed is, what is it you're specifically asking for? Right, it was in the conclusion. I was, um, I was asking council to um, send a letter to the Office of Haldeman Norfolk Social Services to approve SNR funding um, to, um, to support this child whose services have been disrupted um, and, to, and to prioritize their, service, um, their, their, um, their special needs resource funding. So there's nothing that precludes um, um, SNR funding. It's a municipal priority. Um, there, in other municipalities, that they are um, um, funding children beyond 3.8. Um, and even in Norfolk, um, there is, I'm being told that they can support next exceptional situations as well. Um, so I, I'm asking council to consider the uniqueness of our situation. Okay, Councilor Brown. Uh, moving on, Mayor Chop. Okay. Anything further? Okay. I, yes, Councilor Hoffman again. Can I ask questions of staff at this point? We'll let the uh, okay. All right. Thank the you. be seated. Okay, and then we'll go to. Uh, I'll call on Miss Miranda to make some comments. Okay. So you may be seated. Thank you for your deputation. If you could leave your notes that you read off of with the clerk, do you, do you mind sharing them with the clerk's department? Or are they all here? Okay, she has them then. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Ms. Miranda, comments with respect to how we should handle this? Uh... Oh, I need a motion to receive the deputation's information. Councilor Rabbits and Councilor Michelli, those in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Now we'll call on Ms. Miranda to uh, comment on where we should go with this request. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I believe Councillor Hoffman wanted to ask a question, so we can either entertain that or I'd be happy sure. to speak in general terms um, if that suits Council. Councillor Hoffman, do you wish to ask which, a question now? What's your preference? I'll, I'll defer to uh, Marlene Miranda okay. on this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just in general terms about the uh, program, um, we are in receipt of a letter um, from Mrs. Perez and that um, has um, gone under review um, by Ms. Van Dyke and our legal counsel. Um, but just in general terms about the program, we are, we are in full agreement that there's nothing that precludes us from providing this particular funding. Um, however, we are not required to do so and we have also sought that verification from the ministry. Um, it has been our practice that if the child is school-aged and that the only SR, SNR support we provide is for transitional, uh, is, for, is to transition them to school, but not to continue to support them in the licensed child care center. 
Um, just a bit about the program and why this is done here in Norfolk and Haldeman counties. Um, according to our funding agreement with the Ministry of Education, uh, we are required to spend 4.1% of our total allocation on the special needs resourcing. We spent upwards of 10% and we still have pressures within the program to meet the needs of the children who are too young for school and don't have other options. Uh, children who are eligible for school do have other options of funding within the school board. If we were to start providing special need resources as one-offs or in general um, to support children who are held back in licensed uh, childcare, um, there would be a financial impact and it would be unknown. Furthermore, this um, home is in Haldeman County, sorry, this daycare is in Haldeman County, so there would be a direct levy impact to Haldeman, which I think would be prudent to seek um, direction from Haldeman as uh, well. Um, additionally, the Ministry of Education funding for uh, 2019 is unknown, um, and I would suggest to Council that it would be irresponsible for us to expand our services when we could be potentially uh, facing changes in service delivery um, by the province or even potential cuts. Uh, we've been told by the Minister to date um, that um, we are to carry on status quo for the first quarter until further announcements are made. So um, again, I would respectfully suggest that it would be irresponsible um, to expand this service at this point in time. Okay. Questions to Ms. Miranda and Councillor Rabbits first. Um, at this juncture in time, thank you, Chair, and through our Chair um, to Council, uh, I would like to propose we actually defer this question to our Haldeman Norfolk Social Services Advisory Committee for their response. Uh, I think it behooves us to be uh, good partners with Haldeman as they would be affected by this ask to uh, have a chance to discuss uh, what's the information that's been received and presented tonight by our deputation at that advisory board, uh, engaging with our partners that we are service managers and administering services in their area. And this a school is located in Haldeman, and I think it would be appropriate to, uh, again, defer this ask uh, to that board for their recommendations and maybe more information that they would be able to provide us at that point in time. Okay, so you're giving direction then, is that it? I would like to give direction to, uh, to, to send this to the to advisory to uh, committee for a response. Her, uh, her thoughts on that. Uh, through the chair, um, we could do that. I will um, advise council that that will not come until April then, just because of the cycle time uh, reports for the March advisory, sorry, for the February advisory um, and, the, and, the, and the reports for March have already gone to circulation. So we're looking at about a two month window um, to have that brought through um, the health and social services um, process. Do you understand that? So that's direction. Do, you, do we need a uh, motion? Okay, the, the clerk has some uh, wording here, and uh, I'm going to let her read it, and then you put the motion on the floor, recommendation, and then I'm going to call for a second. Uh, through the chair, I have that the deputation be referred to the Health and so sorry, the Haldeman Norfolk Health and Social Services Advisory Committee and report back to Norfolk County Council. That's a recommendation by Councilor Rabbits, a seconder. Don't see a seconder. Oh, Mayor Chop seconds that. We'll call the vote. Those in favor of the recommendation? Three. Those opposed? That's lost. Okay. Council Rabbits, that's lost. Okay. So where do we wish to go? Just leave it as receiving the deputation's information, I guess? Right? Okay. Thank you. It is uh, the hour of 6 o'clock has arrived. The food has arrived. I know there's another deputation coming. What are your wishes, uh, Mayor Chop? Uh, would it not make sense? Um, we've, do, we have some other people here as well. There's only two items left, the notice of motion as well as the deputation. Would it not make sense maybe just to power through and finish up? Okay. Well, I'm just concerned about some people have been sitting for six hours already, the ones that attended the bylaw appeals. But if they can indulge, uh, okay. Maybe a five-minute washroom break or somebody needs it or something? Is that Five-minute washroom break. I can see some. Okay. People are nodding. Yes, yes. Okay, we'll have a five minute washroom break, Mr. Craig.
I gave you a long five minutes. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. We have a quorum here, and I'm going to uh, call on Mr. Brian Craig to come to the podium. And he's going to give us a deputation with respect to the hydrogen sulfide issue from the gas well on Forestry Farm Road. Uh, Mr. Craig, you got uh, 10 minutes. I will remind you at the one minute left mark, okay? There? there. Okay, thank you. Um, Tom Buckles and uh, Rochelle Spangers, Paula Jongerden, and Leanne Shears. And the first slide up there, you'll see a dot right in the center with a red circle around it, and that is the well located on 1925 Forestry Farm Road that is erupting and spewing gas. I just found out about the uh, $500,000 that m and is putting on the table. We are extremely excited about that. I just had a chance to read your briefing note yesterday, and we did have some concerns with the briefing note with respect to the information on hydrogen sulfide. We believe it's a little bit dated. The hydrogen sulfide, you can begin to smell it at 32 parts per billion, or 0 0.032 parts per million. The American Conference of Governmental Industrial Hygienists, recognized around North America, have changed the recommended threshold limit values for airborne hydrogen sulfide exposure. The new recommendations for airborne hydrogen sulfide are an eight-hour time-weighted average of only one part per million. The short term is five part per million. And Canada is actually part of this group. They, they hosted their annual general meetings in 2009, 2013 in Toronto and Montreal. There is a link for more information. If we look at QP, uh, Canadian Union and Public Employees, the safest exposure to hydrogen sulfide is no exposure at all, period. And then if you continue reading on your slides, 100 parts per million, it is designated as, as immediately dangerous to life and health. 5 to 30 parts per million, moderate irritation of the eyes, 5 to 10, relatively minor metabolic changes, and uh, 5 parts per million increase in anxiety symptoms. symptoms. The landowners adjacent to 1925 Forestry Farm Road are experienced irritation to the eyes and throat discomfort. Discomfort. And now raise your hands if you are indeed experiencing irritation to your eyes and throat discomfort. Raise your hands high. That's good. Thank you. Now, what I want to discuss now, however, the monitors, thanks to Norfolk County and Bill Cridland's department, monitors have been placed at the well since about 2017, the fall of 2017, and at uh, the barn at 1860, the Jongerton and Craig property at the barn. But what's really confusing here is that if we look at the next slide and I'd like to thank uh, Marlene Miranda for sharing your data. And on this slide, this is the readings from the well that is erupting uh, from September the 18th to 24th. And you can see it peaks at 180 parts per million. That's really, really high. But then if we go to the graph that's located uh, next to the Jongard and Craig property, right by the barn, zero. And yet, all our neighbors and ourselves are experiencing these, this irritation of the eyes. So we're going to have to look at different monitors because we're very concerned about this. Just as an aside here, October 12th, uh, October 2nd to the 8th, um, over 170 parts per million. Now Bill's group had placed another monitor about 56 meters away from the erupting well. And we can see that uh, as you move away from the well, of course, it decreases quite rapidly. But then, if we look at this diagram here on your monitors, you can see we have the erupting well, the other well that's uh, 56 meters away. But then when you extrapolate, extrapolate on the Jongerton Craig property, 
we are experiencing 40 parts per million and actually have been warned to stay off because, well, look at the numbers, right? It's really not good at all. So back to the um, main issue for this evening and our ask. These are the properties located surrounding the well, the Craig Jondam property, the, uh, the Spangers property, the uh, Shears property, and the Buckles property, and the distances from the well. And this is in our ask, okay? It was stated at the meeting on January 8th that uh, that was organized by Marlene Miranda, and, and the mayor attended, and we really appreciate that, that that the long-term exposure to low levels of hydrogen sulfide are unknown. And we have been subject to four years this spring of unknown levels of exposure. And how can it be that one monitor is reading 180 parts per million and yet another monitor up by the barn is zero? And I think um, I did a little research on this. The monitors, you can purchase them with different sensitivities. The ones who were purchased by Norfolk County, I believe, could be calibrated to zero to 50 parts per million and zero to 100 parts per million. They do also have monitors you can calibrate from zero to 10, which would give you, I believe, much more sensitivity. But I'll leave that up to, uh, to Bill if he has time to do that. So our ask is we respectfully request that H2 uh, hydrogen sulfide monitors be placed at each of our homes that are calibrated and capable of measuring H uh, hydrogen sulfide levels to 0 0.01 parts per million, because we're concerned about the long-term effects of our health. We are experiencing these symptoms. We want to find out exactly what those levels are. We respectively request that the H2S uh, monitoring data that uh, Norfolk County has collected over the last uh, year and a bit be professionally analyzed for trends over time and shared with effective landowners because as stated in the briefing notes, there's a lot of data there. What can we glean from this data to help us to solve this problem? Our preference is that Norfolk County and the new council be very open and transparent. I was, I was actually a little bit disappointed. We were all disappointed that we didn't hear that, that MNR had put $500,000 on the table here to look at this issue. And we ask that you designate a staff person who is dedicated to finding a solution that will correspond regular, regularly to us. And who is in charge and why are they not working with us? We want to be involved in this. We have a lot of local traditional knowledge that we can share. Tom Buckle has done a lot of research on the wells within the area, has lived in the area a long, long time, and we have some things that should be considered. Norfolk County is taking active enforcement measures on marijuana odors. odors that is really good. Hydrogen sulfide is a life-threatening hazard. We need action on this. We respectively request that data from the monitors placed at our homes be emailed on a bi-weekly basis. And I trust that when MNR puts $500,000 on the table, the council will really uh, seriously considering accepting that because it can be put to a lot of good. And we request that we be informed of the results of any research that is being conducted and any potential solutions on a bi-weekly basis and be provided copies of any contracts that are be awarded to study the issue and to determine solutions. We just want to be involved in this. We can help. It's a serious issue. We made some uh, thanks to Norfolk County staff and uh, thanks to the mayor who's done a lot of background uh, work on this and arranged some good meetings. Um, let's work on this together and let's get it solved as soon as possible. We thank you for the time to give this deputation. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Craig. Um, I'm going to ask you to, if you could pass your notes. I know we've got them up here. Over to the deputy clerk. Okay, actually, it's just a copy of the PowerPoint. That's all. Right. Can you yeah. get it? Okay, she says she can get it tomorrow. Okay. Okay. We're ready for questions. I thought I saw a hand up there. No questions. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Craig. Thank you. And uh, let's see where this goes, okay? So, we do have a uh, report. First, I need somebody to make the motion to receive the deputation of Mr. Craig. Councilor Taylor and Councilor Rabbits, seconds. Those in favor? That's carried. Thank you. And now I will call on uh, Ms. Miranda. Is that you uh, with respect to this report? 
Thank you, um, Mr. Ch um, Chair. Um, this report is to provide uh, just a high-level briefing uh, to Council um, of the history um, and also current situation of the gas wells um, to further complement what Mr. Craig has already spoken to. Um, back in August of 2017, Norfolk County responded to two gas well leaks producing continuous dangerous levels of hydrogen sulfide with potential threat to human health. Um, leaking gas wells were uh, previously unfamiliar to Norfolk County staff and public health um, and at that time and staff since then have continued to engage and collaborate uh, primarily with the uh, Ministry of Natural uh, Resources and Forestry. Um, the reoccurrence of leaking gas wells is inevitable as there's approximately uh, 2,600 recorded wells in Norfolk of varying age and condition. I won't speak too much to Forestry Farm Road, um, as Mr. Craig has already demonstrated the, the pictorial, um, but it is of an urgent matter that we have been working on and uh, working with the Ministry of Natural Resources and more recently um, with uh, the University of Waterloo um, and geologists and engineers um, and their team there to move some of the activities forward. Staff are pleased to share with Council that we did get a call from the um, Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry of potential funding of um, $500,000 which has been identified for which um, Norfolk County uh, may qualify as an eligible municipal entity. The funds are intended uh, for Norfolk County to advance the research and explore potential remediation options of leaking gas wells in uh, Norfolk. Um, unfortunately, the funds are to be spent by March uh, 31st of this year. Um, given the tight timeline, staff are seeking uh, council approval to accept the funds. Um, if, count, if Norfolk is deemed to be a qualified uh, municipal entity, uh, we are working currently with the MNRF and Mayor Chop is working with Long Point um, Regional Conservation Authority um, had the researchers of Waterloo to um, put a suite of interventions to forward to come up with a plan on how we may spend the um, $500,000. Staff are also uh, seeking council approval to delegate authority to staff to enter any um, service agreements to take appropriate steps to initiate the services necessary and to receive the exemption to the, the county's purchasing policy. And with staff, um, myself and my colleagues would be happy to answer any questions. Questions for Ms. Miranda? Mayor Chop. Just one um, through you, Mr. Chair, Marlene. I, I was a little bit surprised, I, and I didn't get a chance to talk to you about this earlier, but my understanding was it, this was confidential up to this point, which is why I hadn't said anything. Why, why didn't we reach out to them and let them know? That, the, uh, that we were going to receive that funding. So through um, the chair, um, typically we bring things to council before we share it with anyone. Um, so we would bring it to you forward. It was confidential, but um, we needed to get um, council aware of the funds and to accept the funds so we could actually expedite it and try to utilize the funds in the best ap approach um, by the end of uh, March 31st. So it wasn't in, like literally, as you know, and because you participated in the meeting, we literally just found out about it um, and I happen to be on vacation so we've pulled this together to share it as quickly as we could both with council um, and the residents. Just through you Mr. Chair, uh, well just myself personally I would have loved to have sent them an email to be honest and said hey you know or made a phone call that this is happening uh, so I was pretty surprised when I was overseas because I hadn't seen the agenda at that point um, when I saw the email so for that uh, I certainly apologize and um, I understand um, that that would have been nice to, to hear from, from us. Uh, the next piece that I just wanted to maybe touch on is some of the different options that we're looking at. Um, and maybe you could sort of elaborate a little bit further. We spoke about this last night on the phone. Um, but the researchers, I think that there's a big focus to continue pushing for more research data. And what I just don't want to see is that the 500,000 gets spent on more research. If there is some supplementary left over after we try some things like engineered wetlands and so on, um, then it could be used to purchase additional monitors, which maybe Mr. Cridlin can touch on whether or not how many additional monitors we have currently and whether we have ones that have the um, higher calibration or, or lower, depending on which way you want to look at it, ability. Um, 
I think that it's, it's come to a point where we don't know whether or not these solutions will work, but we need to at least try something. And uh, we have an opportunity here when I spoke with uh, Toby Barrett in, um, at Roma. Uh, you know, this is an opportunity given we have 9,000 wells across Norfolk and Haldeman uh, that if it does work, well, you know, this will be something that they will be able to continue to study as well. Um, but certainly we're at a point where I think we actually need to try a solution and not just more research. And one last thing, um, in terms of the data, one thing I am a little bit concerned about, and I know um, Dr. Shanker had touched on it, Marlene, in the meeting with the MNR, was what are we doing to study the data? Like for three years, we've been hearing about the collection of the data, but what is the health department actually doing with the data currently? Through the chair to uh, Mayor Chop, currently um, we are looking at the data as we receive it from the fire department in its raw data set, and we're looking through all of the um, all of the data to see if there's any continuous readings, um, because the readings that you saw before you today are episodic and they are not sustained, um, and so just to see if there's any differential in the data and whether we need to respond accordingly, we have um, put um, grants forward to the Ministry of Health and Long Term Care to request an analyst for that data. We don't have those internal expertise um, and we have not um, been successful in those grants. Um, so we, we would need a council direction to be able to do that fulsome analysis um, because it's just not part of the mandate and not something that we currently have in-house. Um, so we have reached out to the um, MOECP as well um, and they have sent us a letter um, probably about a year ago now, um, saying that um, they would not continue to do monitoring, although the report that they originally uh, did provide for us um, when we were dealing with the two uh, initial wells um, was instrumental in helping the decision making. Um, so that type of analysis would be ideal for this situation. It just doesn't currently exist within Norfolk County. Okay. So I think ultimately, so that everybody's on the same page, we haven't we haven't studied what the impacts to somebody's health might be from this. Right now we're just collecting data. Um, so through the chair, uh, we have not studied the data and the trending in that. And as far as the health risks specifically, um, we've reached out um, to Public Health Ontario and we've had them do a lit search. And unfortunately, uh, it did conclude that there was little data. So we have advocated for them to start doing uh, research on the health impacts. Um, I've also shared the data uh, with Health Canada. And I actually had an email while I was off last week um, to provide some further context to that data so that they're working on that um, that data as, as well. Um, but again, internally, um, you're absolutely right, Mayor Chop. We are not analyzing the data in any type of trending, and we're not looking specifically at the health risks. And we would need uh, participants to actually be able to evaluate some of those health risks clearly. So <clears throat> through you, Mr. Chair, I'm wondering, that, and this kind of just came as somebody that came to me now, somebody that spent a lot of time in academic institutions, um, have we ever reached out to any... Um, universities that have medical programs, even somebody that's looking for, you know, a PhD thesis or so on that would, might be willing to take this on and actually study the health impacts and, and talk to the residents and use the data in, in that way? Yeah. So through the chair, uh, we currently have not. Um, Public Health Ontario is our research arm, so we would rely on them. Um, but definitely we could um, reapproach um, the Public Health Ontario and see um, about advocating for, for such research. I think uh, myself through you, Mr. Chair, that would be something that would be sort of incumbent upon us to do at this point. I mean, what, we're all we've, what we've been doing is we've been collecting data but we're not actually, and we're saying we don't know what the effects are at low levels of, of uh, chronic exposure, um, but, but then we're not doing anything with it and, and we're not making moves to change it. So, I mean, thank you for all the hard work with the MNR and so on. Uh, like, I, this is an amazing opportunity for, for Norfolk to take this money. It's on a very tight timeline. Um, and again, just to reiterate what I said before, I understand that the researchers have, you know, put together uh, a, a large document. I haven't seen it yet with a plan, um, but it, the plan is focused around more research. And I think we really also need to at least try some solutions at this point, even if they don't work. 
So, uh, and sorry, one last thing, Mr. Chair, through you, just to Mr. Cridlin, in terms of the monitors, how many, um, do we have extra monitors at this point? Through the chair to Mayor Chop. The, the four monitors we have, uh, the field monitors, are on site location now. So any uh, field monitors or to, to put into the homes, we would have to purchase extra monitors at this point. <clears throat> so I think um, as well in that package, what we, you know, with the 500,000, we look at the engineered wetlands, we look at the possible, you know, carbon air filtration and, you know, at, including some additional monitors that could be placed directly uh, at, in people's homes, I think would also be key. You're suggesting, Madam Mayor, that some of the $500,000 could be used to purchase monitors? Yes, I was involved um, that, with Marlene with... Ms. I'm sorry, could you repeat that, um, Mr. Chair? Can we Chair? use some of the $500,000 from MNRF to purchase monitors? Yeah. So through um, the chair um, to council, uh, I have put that suggestion forward. Um, so it's the plan for research from the researchers. It's some of the potential um, options of wet, um, engineered wetlands, the carbon option, um, and the monitoring. Um, and as you're aware, um, the MNRF um, will be the ultimate decision maker on what suite of interventions we can actually utilize it for. Um, I would suggest, and again, I don't have any confirmation from the MNR at this point in time, that monitors likely wouldn't be considered um, because the air quality piece would be something that would fall under the Ministry of Environment um, and, um, and Parks. However, um, it's, it's, it's on the table for as a, one of the options. Uh, furthermore, we're, we're um, submitting our annual service plan for public health, and we are once again going to be asking the Ministry of um, Health and Long-Term Care um, for funding uh, for air quality monitoring and, and analysis. Go ahead. I thought in that conversation with, um, with Sherry that, that that was one of actually her suggestions was that we could use it in part towards. So um, through the mayor, sorry, through the chair to the mayor, I, I don't remember specifically what the comment was. I'm just su suggesting that maybe the MOE would be the more responsible um, ministry. However, it's on the table for consideration for discussion later this week for whatever the options are. Um, they are in receipt of the plan from the University of Waterloo, um, and they've asked for a few days to review it so they could provide um, commentary um, back to staff and council. I, I th Mr. Uh, Barrett, um, when I spoke to him in uh, Toronto, he seemed in full support um, of the entire initiative, and uh, I think that he would be amenable to uh, supporting us um, with whatever asks that we move forward with, with that money. So that's exciting news. Okay. Further questions regarding the report, the deputation? Council Rabbits. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And through the chair... Um, over to Mr. Credlin. I did want to ask what uh, the cost of a monitor is, just so we have sort of a baseline. What are the what are the costs of these monitoring devices? Is there maintenance required? Do they expire? Maybe a little bit more information about uh, just you know what a monitor is in general, what it costs us. Through the chair to councillor, yeah, I, I'm I'm almost understanding that the residents are asking for a monitor that is almost a, a parts per billion, um, I, and, and I'm not sure. I have text um, fire staff. Uh, ours are parts per million for the, for the fire industry. We don't go that low. Um, I'm I'm going to look at Marlene because the monitors were actually bought through her side. Was it about eight eight thousand dollars a monitor, Marlene? Am I yeah. So through the chair, they were approximately $8,000. I'm not sure if they can be recalibrated to parts per billion, so that's something that our fire team will be able to articulate for us this week. Um, and um, what the cost, if not, um, I don't know what the cost would be for uh, monitors that would be parts per billion. Those particular monitors were purchased um, through public health dollars. We had a surplus of uh, funding at that point in time, and we were able to reallocate them at that point in time um, to purchase those four monitors um, to assist us with um, the, the monitoring that we're currently doing. Okay. Anything further? No? Okay, there's a recommendation printed on page 49 of the agenda package. I need a mover and a seconder. Councillor Geisen moves it. Seconder, Councillor Taylor. And I will read it. The staff report HSS 19-14. Leaking gas well update Ministry of Natural Resources funding be received as information. And that council directs staff to accept the funding of $500,000 for 
from the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry if Norfolk County is eligible to do so to advance the research, research of the leaking gas wells around Forestry Farm Road and to explore potential remediation options with completion by March 31st, 2018, 19. And further, that council authorized the general manager, health and social services, and or the general manager of public works to enter into a service agreement with the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry to advance the research and potential options of remediation of leaking gas wells and take appropriate steps to initiate the services necessary to advance the research and potential remediation options. And further, that council authorized an exemption to the county's purchasing policy to enter into agreements with experts in the field as determined by the MNRF and or the University of Waterloo. No further discussion. Call the vote. Those in favor? That carry unanimously. Thank you. And now, thank you, Ms. Miranda, and thank you to the deputation for coming forward. We'll move to the last item on the agenda. It's a notice of motion. And this is put forth by Mayor Chop. Mayor Chop. There was a little bit of a confusion while I was away. Just um, I was reading the uh, procedural bylaw. Um, and I've spoken with our deputy clerk this morning. Uh, so I have, I, I was hoping, there is some time sensitivity to this matter um, as a result of some impending uh, litigation against Norfolk County. And uh, so I was hoping that we might be able to hear this at council. As the chair of council, it would have been within um, my authority to add it direct to the agenda. Um, so, However, it was added as a notice of motion this week, and according to our procedural bylaw, for those that don't know, if you add something as a notice of motion now at CIC, it gets added to the following CIC meeting and not uh, to the next council meeting. So um, <clears throat> with the deputy clerk, I've prepared another motion, and I'm just wondering um, if I might be able to move that at this time. And it reads uh, that the rules of order pertaining to the notice of motion and motion process be waived to hear the February um, 5th of 2019 notice of motion respecting recreational vehicles or trailer usage on Hastings Drive uh, be heard at the February 12th, 2019 council meeting. Okay, I'm informed that it has to be a two thirds vote be able to do that, okay? Mm -hmm. Just get my instructions from the experts here. Okay, so go ahead, keep, keep. That's all. Okay. Yes, Council Van Passen. If you're looking for a seconder, I think it is time sensitive, so uh, I it, would make a second. Mayor's made the motion, right? Yeah. You're the seconder? Yeah. Okay. It's on the floor. Is there discussion on two thirds? Yeah. Any discussion on this matter? Yes, Councilor Michelle. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just for the information for <clears throat> some members of Council who might not be as familiar with uh, with this topic, um, the, the people living on uh, Hastings Drive have been for some time prevented from having a recreational vehicle or a trailer on, uh, on their own property, uh, even though um, all of the legislation and, uh, and all of the the legal opinions uh, describe this as a, a totally legal thing to do to locate a trailer on property that you own on in, the, in that area of land. Um, you know, we, we'll, I'm anticipating we'll hear more ab about this obviously uh, uh, next week, but um, just so everybody kind of understands, the owners are simply asking for the use of their own property. They want to park, uh, some of them want to park a trailer or a recreational vehicle on their property. Uh, the, the current uh, bylaws are preventing them from doing that. And uh, I think this is something that uh, council needs to have a very close look at. Um, in, in many cases, um, the residents there have owned these lots for generations and they're not allowed to use their own property on which they pay taxes. And so <clears throat> uh, what, what these owners are, are asking for is, is as the, uh, the um, mayor has mentioned, they're asking for legal non-conforming status so that they can use the property, enjoy the property, 
that they are the owners of. Um, you know, the, these people are, are not threats to the environment in any way. They are, they are not threats to wildlife. Uh, they, are, they, are, they are just simply, they are good people who are being treated dissimilarly from other Norfolk County taxpayers. And so I'm, I'm very much in, in support of this. Thank you. Mayor Chop? Oh, oh, sorry. I'm going to go to Mr. Taylor. Mm. Taylor first. Uh, yes. Thank you. Mr. Chair, um, just curious as to the time-sensitive nature aspect of it, just if you could elaborate a little bit, just curious. Uh, there is litigation against the county currently in regards to legal non-conforming status. So I just wanted to clarify a little bit from Councillor Michelli. I do think there's future work uh, to continue to be done in regards to Hastings Drive. However, this particular motion, as it's read, currently and the notice of motion it's specifically for those trailers that were on um, people that were using trailers on their property prior to the OMB ruling uh, and that they would be granted legal non-conforming status um, the OMB ruling to be clear specifically did not rule on legal non-conforming um, uses on, on Hastings Drive prior to to that ruling so that for for next week that's specifically what we would be hearing and that is specifically um what the um the uh, case against norfolk county um that's on the the court docket currently okay everybody understand the motion i'm going to ask the uh clerk to read it back to the chair that the rules of order pertaining to the notice of motion and motion process be waived to hear the February 5th, 2019 notice of motion respecting recreational vehicle or trailer usage on Hastings Drive at the February 12th, 2019 council meeting. Okay. So I'll go. Is there any further discussion? I'll call the vote then. Those in favor? Those opposed? Unopposed. Okay, that is carried. So that will be coming up next week. Great. Councilman Pass. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, could I ask then that the clerk provide copies of that OMB ruling in our packages this Friday? It's so. yes, a very, you. very good idea to come up with that right. Okay. Will that be emailed to us now? Okay. Good enough. So I guess there's no other business. So this meeting is adjourned. And, uh, we do have lots of food. What's that? They may have some other business to do. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's been a long day, man. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay. We'll go to other business. Miss Miranda first. Nothing, thank you. Yakov. James. There we go. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I do have a request uh, for council. Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, when we were uh, debating, or sorry, the, discussing the, uh, the user fee uh, report, uh, it was requested that we come back with a report in February regarding uh, certain fees. And uh, staff have been working on that report. However, uh, there are some uh, other issues that we would like to uh, research and, and do some more work with it. Uh, and that'll take a little bit more time, and we're requesting if uh, we can defer that report to the CIC in March. Uh, it'll be, uh, as a result, uh, we don't want to rush it, and we want to make sure you have the, uh, the proper information. Uh, there's, some other, there's been some other prior priorities that have come up over the last few weeks that we've been working on, and uh, so, uh, it's so I, I request Council's uh, permission to uh, extend that to March. Councilor Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, through you to staff, I, the only concern I have is I know that there are um, user fees that directly relate to Friday the 13th in Port Dover, and, and the clerk had mentioned to us that uh, he did not think anyone would be applying for those permits come February, and I am aware that people are applying for those permits. So if we're looking at changing or addressing any fees, um, that would be my only concern with pushing it again until March. Uh, through the chair to Councillor Martin, what's, what's in the revised motion, was Friday the 13th fees 
part of those, or are we going to include that with the Friday the 13th report? Maybe perhaps Mr. Cridlin. I think it was going to be included in the Friday the 13th report. I do recall. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is that right, Mr. Cridlin? Through, through, the, or through the chair, yes, that's, that's correct. It's a separate report. Okay. It's going to be in the Friday the 13th report. Okay. You done, James? Okay. Oh. <laughs> Okay, can we just give direction on this? Mayor Chop? Oh, I just wanted to comment in terms of the, the Port Dover fees as well. It, it's, to me, it, it, when we do get the other report, there would be no reason that we wouldn't be able to credit people back if we were to change or reduce the, the user fees. Clerk says that's correct. I, I support you bringing okay, in Okay, it's March. supportive. We'll just give you a direction. Uh, head, head nod. Show of hands to give direction to concur with. Okay, that's good. So there you got it. <laughs> Mr. Baird. Uh, just a reminder to council and Norfolk County residents that our economic development symposium is this Thursday in Port Dover. We're looking forward to it. Okay. Mr. Gridman? Uh, nothing this evening, Chair. Deputy Clerk? Nothing? Okay, we'll start with Mr. Van Pass, Councilor Van Pass. Well, I, I thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my wife said, says, sends thank yous to the Treasurer for the background information on the bug budget because I no longer bugger in any free time I have. Okay, is that all? <laughs> Councillor Huffman. Thank you. Um, a couple of things. One, I just wanted to um, take this opportunity. I know it's in our Council Information Package, but I do want to make an acknowledgement that February is Black History Month, and Canadians take this time to celebrate the many achievements and contributions of black Canadians who throughout history have done so much to make Canada the culturally diverse, compassionate, and prosperous nation that it is today. So I think that's um, something that we need to um, acknowledge. And on a more informal note, I would like to wish my colleague, Mrs. Councillor Ryan Taylor, a very happy 26th birthday. Happy birthday, Ryan. <laughs> Okay. That was my news too. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. That's good information. We'll move over to Councillor Mark. Nope, just happy birthday wishes. That's it. Okay. <laughs> Councillor Michelle. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, of course, happy birthday, Ryan. Um, also, just uh, um, the Telecommunications Advisory Committee uh, meeting uh, that we held, had yesterday. Uh, they asked me to mention to Council that uh, we are supporting a, a swift um, recommendation uh, to uh, send a letter on, uh, on what is called a call for comment by the CRTC uh, that is um, aimed at, um, in many cases, uh, disproportionately um, defining um, internet and fiber optic zones in Ontario. And so that, um, that letter will be going out uh, within the next uh, two weeks. Thank you. Okay. Good birthday, boy. Thank you for the birthday wishes, guys. Appreciate it. Um, I've got some news here. Simcoe, Sammy Dillon, who was born and raised in Simcoe, is a third-year student at McMaster University. And she will be re representing this region in Peru at the Global Vision Summit. Out of hundreds of applicants, <clears throat> she was chosen to be a team lead. And if anyone out there watching does want a little more information on what it is she'll be doing, please reach out to me and I'd be happy to get you in contact with her. She does, given her position that she got out of the application, has to uh, come up with some funds. Uh, take care. <laughs> okay, thank you. Councillor Geis. Councillor Rabbits. Thank you. Uh, happy birthday, Councillor Taylor. I also want to mention that I will be in attendance for the Tourism and Economic Development Symposium taking place on February the 7th. Doors open at uh, 7.30 a.m. if you want to be early for the meet and mingle, and it should be a good event showcasing uh, economic development and business opportunities in Norfolk County. Thank you. And Mayor Chop, uh, I, I left you close to the end because that's kind of been tradition around this table for the past 18 years. So, okay. You got the floor. Um, well, just a happy birthday again to Ryan. And also, I'm told we don't have a camera volunteer this evening. So, if anybody's watching out there and is looking for a volunteer um, gig, <laughs> we need you. I think Rob Clark as well, if you're watching, I remember he was possibly interested. So, um, hopefully, we can find someone to join us. Okay. Thank you. 
and I have no other business today, so I think we're ready to close the meeting. I'm moving to seconder. Councilor Rabbits and Councilor Huffman move that we uh, close the public meeting. Those in favor? Thank you. That's Gary. There's lots of food back there, guys. <laughs>